All right. This one ought to be good. Welcome back to another episode of the Corporate Cowboys Podcast. I'm your host, Alex, the intern. Today is Monday, January 4th. Today has been a good day. But you know how that goes. I um I had a great weekend. I hope every likewise had I hope everyone had one likewise and has been able to push successfully into Monday. Today's episode um shit every episode is special. It's my belief. But also, I'd like to think that um, that every every episode deserves <laughs> deserves a mention of it being special. I'm um, I'm currently awaiting the start to a new semester, and in the meantime, a little bit of a uh, little bit of practice. I've been reading, I've been researching, I've been creating this, this content, and um, it's overall just uh, refining my skills, sharpening, sharpening myself with both my left and my right hand, sharpening, um, sharpening my, what is it? hand-eye coordination, my dexterity. I have a, a new goal. I mean, I have a ton of goals, ton of professional goals. Some being to uh, learn <laughs> learn a handful of languages, obviously, throughout the course of my life. And, um, you know, just some personal goals, like being able to write with both hands, um, being able to draw with both hands if I can. So every now and then I'll find myself doodling or um, throwing a throwing a bouncy ball or a rubber ball against the wall with my off hand. The goal being to to become superfluous to become. A corporate cowboy, always better, even in the most, even in the smallest sense, even in, in matters that appear to be unimportant. They most definitely are, believe it or not. Um, how about we do a little, uh... Yeah, how about we do a little guided meditation here while I while I play with my um with my fidget toy. <laughs> I'm just dry firing, honestly. But I do so when I have a little bit of time that I'm alone and uh, feel like I could squeeze in. Squeeze in a couple of uh, rounds into a session of meditation. Really, this is when I choose to just practice on items in a particular setting that I'm in. At a mirror, posters, lights, what have you. It's fun. Imagine if you will, what the truth looks like. And it's hard, it's hard to conceive what's true and what isn't. Many folks say that the truth is subjective as is morality. It's it's all relative to whoever is trying to, on whoever is considering it. It's all relative to the observer, one might say. 
to the person who is taking the measurement, who is measuring the truth, who is measuring morality. Let me put it to you another way. Imagine the truth being a deck of cards. Any deck of cards. Maybe not any deck of cards. But for the sake of our session, imagine it's just your standard four suit 52 card deck. Four suits, 52 cards. And the deck contains the truth. For all intents and purposes, let's say it is the truth. The deck is the truth. Hold on here. <laughs> because in the middle of that meditation, I had to remind myself what um <laughs> the proper usage of hold on intent intensive intents in fuck I said it right, but I'm thinking of intensive purposes also, purposes that are demanding, you could say, but that's not the context in which I am using it now. For all intents and purposes, the deck, the four suited 52 card deck is the truth. Shuffle it any way you want. Every card is a fundamental truth. And so the deck itself might be the basis of reality. Shuffle it any way you like. You pick up a card and you read it. And it makes sense because it's the truth. Any card you pick up will be the truth. <laughs> <clears throat> now, imagine if you will that this deck, the deck of truth, the truth is universal. So, it's a communal deck. <clears throat> It's a communal deck that everyone can play with, everyone can use, everyone can shuffle, pick cards, consider, contemplate, read, and find the truth. So it's a priceless deck. It's invaluable. Everyone can use it. And it's necessary for reality. Everyone will use it. Either voluntarily or involuntarily. It's just the truth. It's what holds up. So it holds up the house of cards. <laughs> when everything is made of cards, the walls, the doors, it's the truth that holds up our reality. <clears throat> so imagine 
imagine the profit that exists in introducing one's own cards within the truth. Cards that might be right, cards that might fit, but aren't the truth. They're either right or they're wrong. Some can be neutral, I suppose. There is a gray area. But there are either those that build on the truth, or there are those that subvert and undermine the truth, bury the truth. So don't think about a house of cards. Think about it being just the deck, the deck of cards. Similar to how you might put together two or more decks. Much like uh, casinos do. Casinos do this. When you go play cards at a table, they're not only playing with one deck. That wouldn't make any sense because every time they run out of cards... The dealer would have to shuffle just the one deck, take their time, making sure, making sure that the deck is shuffled correctly in order to continue with the poker game at hand. But the casino also has an interest in making sure that the deck is shuffled correctly, but the dealer doesn't have any side agreements with anybody at the table. So... To prevent fraud, we'll call it, the casino incorporates many decks together, shuffles them accordingly before shipping them together to a table that a dealer is already working at. So they're not taking two decks and blending them together, right? They're just taking the individual decks, shuffling them, making sure they are shuffled in a uh, legitimate manner, one that the casino likely has standards for, like a, a, a process, a, a, some, what is it, some standard operating procedure on how to shuffle a deck, and then those shuffled decks are then stacked atop one another and they might be two to ten decks and then sh shipped off to um, delivered to the table that will be using them so the table upon using these decks and distributing them, using them for their games, goes through one deck that's been shuffled already by the casino. The dealer no longer is required to shuffle before dealing. So it's been shuffled by the casino. And they use an entire deck before. And you may have seen this in casinos or imagine, if you will, when they're done with one deck there is a might be like a blank card signifying that they're using a new deck a new pre-shuffled deck so in using this deck or in using a single deck one in which all the cards are legitimate one in which the cards or stand-ins for the truth. Some might try to use the truth for personal gain. Nothing against that. It's just that. Because the deck of truth is communal Sooner or later, it's returned to the deck or that card of truth is pulled 
from wherever you have it in your operation. If your operation is ever audited, if your house of cards is ever audited, and that card of truth is pulled from your operation and your operation collapses, your operation was a piece of shit. <laughs> oh shit. Cause you can't bury the truth, man. You cannot you cannot bury the truth. I suppose that's what corporate cowboys do. Not bury the truth. We do the exact opposite. We uncover the truth. Yeah, it, it implies it implies reverse engineering bearing the truth and to do that you have to know well you have to be versed in identifying dirt <clears throat> so i guess you have to know how to bear the truth in order to look for it but it's not hard to identify Again, every operation to even have minimal success has to be <laughs> has to be founded on truth. And the truth is that business begets business. Business ought to beget business. Opportunities ought to beget opportunities. But if business is employed in a manner that excludes others, that keeps others from conducting business, that infringes on the ability for others to operate you got to ask yourself, is the truth on your side? Is it a righteous cause? <clears throat> it's just Monday. It's just Monday. And I'm already thinking of business. <sighs> when you first contemplate business, when you first enter business, you enter for yourself. You enter in order to secure yourself some compensation, some form of livelihood. You need to eat. You need to sleep. You need a place to sleep. You need a place to stay. You need clothes. You need shoes. In some places, you need a car. You need utilities. Gasoline, petrol. <laughs> Access. Access to resources. And you do that by entering business. When you're entry level in business, without a doubt, you're hungry. More than likely, you're facing some barrier to entry, some requirements you've got to overcome. At any level, you enter when you're entry level. Maybe you need a high school diploma. 
maybe you need a degree. Maybe you need some technical know-how, knowledge of its application, and a little leadership skill. Some kind of certificate that will legitimize you as a valid entrant into business. You can enter independently. You can enter under someone else. You could start at minimum wage, flipping burgers. But when you're in, is when the game begins, is when, (laughs) is when you become a business person is when you become a person of business. Not necessarily a business person because business person carries with this connotation that that you are, um, well, personally, business person just carries this connotation that you're, that you deal solely with, with businesses. But I'm trying to present this in a more holistic, more generally applicable manner of being a a person of business. You've entered the game. You're in the workforce, not just an applicant, not just a job searcher, a job seeker, but you're working. You're entry level. Honestly, every time you're applying for a position, whether you're recruited or not, anytime you're being considered for a new position, folks ought to think that they're entry level. Being entry level isn't a bad thing. It's just how individuals approach it. It's how individuals sell it. When you're entry level, you still have power. More power than you can imagine. Access, unprecedented access than if you were not even on the roster, than if you weren't an employee. And some recognize it going in some do recognize it. I had um a previous friend in the past who actually did work for a fast food joint, minimum wage, pulled long hours. We were still in high school. But the job kept them busy, kept them out of trouble. And he had stories of everything he had access to and what he and his co-workers would get up to when they had access to to food and possible associations with employees at other stores Just little you know either little networks the the social resources the social benefits or the material benefits of the free food on hand you tell me of the experiments they'd make. If you think Taco Bell comes up with a new item every year, a new couple items every year, they were coming up with new items every week kind of thing. Oh, that shit was funny. Taco Bell might want to look into getting the human resources on the, on the ground level and interviewing with store employees, not just managers who are able able to finesse numbers. I think I mentioned that in one of the previous episodes, what the actual job of a manager is. 
<laughs> it's to manage their manager with numbers. You think they're actually managing and cultivating employees? Those are few and far in between. In some instances, in some cases, the employee might actually be more knowledgeable than than the CEO. I know that's a huge claim. That's a fucking bold claim. That's likely to inflame an ego or two. But if the jacket fit and you chose to wear it, you need to ask why it feels so warm. Is it because the jacket works against the cold or are you heated? <laughs> when you're entry level forever, you could be the CEO and still just be entry level. Nothing wrong with that. No shame. When you're entry level, you're hungry. You just came off of the bench. And the coach, i.e. God, or however the world works, chose to put you in the game. Chose to put you to work. Chose to get you the W2, the I9, to get you the 1099. Presented the opportunity to yourself and you passed. You made it. You're officially entry level. Doesn't matter you've held your position for 50 years. For 50 years. Doesn't matter you've held your position for six months. Doesn't matter if you just got off of probation. Doesn't matter if you're tenured. Doesn't matter if job security is guaranteed if you're not acting like you're entry level if you're not hungry if you're not pushing you're fucking dead you're fucking dead in the water you're no longer a person of business you're just in the fucking way And that, that, being a person of business, being a business person, I don't know, maybe I'll try to co-opt it, try to co-opt business person. But when you're a business person and you're a corporate cowboy, you're entry level forever. Remember that. If your manager tries to sell you on the idea of waiting, just sitting back, relaxing until it's your turn, <laughs> and they try to sell you on if you wait, you could be just like me. My guy, if you wait, you already are just like him. Both dead. <laughs> Both in the way. <laughs> Gotta keep moving. Gotta keep pushing ahead. When you're entry level forever. Some say that they need five, ten years of experience for their entry level employees. Right? And then you get the gripers. The whiners who say, how do I, you know, why do you need five, ten years experience when I'm coming in as entry level? You could gain five, ten years experience easy. I know what they're asking for is some kind of provable record, some kind of reference. Well, you should have them even in everyday life when you're a person of business. When you're a corporate cowboy, when you're entry level forever, any organization is a target.
not a target. Every organization is an is an arena. Every organization is a market. Every institution. Every institution has its players. Every institution has its positions. Every institution has a hierarchy. Every institution has gray areas. Every institution has slack. Every organization is an opportunity. When you're a corporate cowboy. Now, a word from our sponsors. Are you tired of... Hold on, hold on. I want to make this funny. Are you tired of your waistband riding high? Of your belt feeling too light? Buy a gun. <laughs> Plant that on your waistband, on your belt, using a holster, or just carrying it on the sly. Guaranteed to provide the extra weight, support, and leverage you need in everyday life. Guns. Brought to you by life. Powered by death. Yo, if anybody needs to be <laughs> to write some fire adverts for them, to uh, produce a commercial or a promotion or audit, audits, critique some kind of work they got going, no sweat. Holler at the kid. Shoot me an email. Find us on Instagram, incorporating.associates underscore IA. Get yourself a consultation. I'm speaking to potential corporations out there who might be um, using AI, machine learning, to analyze my voice, to analyze my words. If you need an organizational audit, something that HR isn't doing, or if you need HR audited, shit, holler at your boy. Because I'm hungry. And I'm entry level forever. <laughs> People like me never go hungry. People like me never starve. That's what I meant. We never go hungry. Forever. We're always hungry. We want more. We want more of what's better. We're looking for improvement constantly. But as far as suffering, pain, hunger... Now we'll likely never experience it. We can appreciate it. We've lived through it. But settle? Nah, never. thinking of a good story i'm thinking of a good story sorry for that long pause there i'm thinking of a good story i've got so many some um i feel like i might burn some people you know their identities or whatever for being 
bitches. But I'm thinking of a good story. One that uh, embodies what it means to be entry level forever. And the only one I can really think of who's st- stuck to the script and been a corporate cowboy at heart before it was even coined, before it was even a phrase, is myself. But there are others. There are others who've, uh, who've lived that. I'm having issues with um, one of my hands whenever I'm dry firing. <sighs> There's like a little yanking. I'm pulling, I'm pulling to the side. And what I'm trying to do is now concentrate on having the fingers that I'm using to hold the grip remain Remain calm, remain steady. To not exert excessive force or extra force. To not exert any extra energy. While the trigger finger is what does all the um, all the squeezing. But I'm working on it. I'm working on it. It's just that I feel my entire hand go off when I finally get to that point where I'm squeezing. And I think it's just for the one hand. Yeah, it's just for the one hand. The other hand is pretty solid. But it's the one I'm working on getting um, on getting up there. It's the ultimate goal of it. being ambidextrous. That was pretty good. It's the ultimate goal of being ambidextrous. So when it comes to being entry level forever, well, what is that, you might ask? Maybe the first half gave you a little insight on what it means to be entry level level forever. And really, it's just a a state of mind, a a mind state, a mind state. You move, you move like you're always hungry. You move like you're always applying. You move like you're trying out always, even if you've made the team. Even if you've been called off of the bench. Even if you're even if you've been secured a spot and the shit's guaranteed. You don't think you're gonna rub people the wrong way if you suddenly let off of the gas? Why the fuck would they have then then why the fuck did they bring you on? If they knew you were just gonna bitch out as soon as you made the team, as soon as you got a little bit of security. As soon as as soon as you're willing to sacrifice your life and your liberty for that sense of stability. Eh? Eh? See, I don't want to get political on here, but it all relates. It all relates because we were born into, well, some of us were born into, and we live in a giant corporation with bylaws. We're all corporate cowboys. Um, I'm just making you aware of that. <laughs> I'm just pulling the wool from your eyes. Some of you haven't been participating. Some of you are in the fucking way. <laughs> but we'll get to that at a later date. Being entry level forever means... That your resume... That, that, that you're always selling your resume. And it's not even the resume. It's the qualifications you have. You're always getting them validated. You're always growing the skill that you had previously. <clears throat> and in that way, you're guaranteeing your position for tomorrow. And yeah, it is a little hard when you live in a fire at will state. I forget what they call it now, but I always call it fire at will because it just makes so much sense. <laughs> it makes so much sense, fire at will. Now oh, now they call it at will employment. That's right, that's right. But not me, I call it fire at will because it implies that that there's firing going on. 
who knows what kind of firing. Maybe it's firing coming from the from the management team. Maybe it's, you know, some firing coming from some fire coming from the uh, employee, some fire coming from the independent contractor. You know, and that shit's at will in an at will state. You never know where it's coming from. I mean, we can be realistic. More than likely, it's coming from the corporation, from a perceived position of, from a perceived position of power. Maybe they're getting rid of a, of an employee they're just not satisfied with, and they don't need a reason to fire. It's called fire at will for. For just that reason, because they need no reason, they can just say, "Hey, you're fired." They don't have to not like your performance, the way you look, your race, your age, your sex. They don't have to give a shit. They can just fire your ass. What about when the fire comes from the employee? Well, a lot of folks like to think that that's just quitting. That's just leaving the job. And they might be right in the sense that if you are a valuable employee, that you've made your yourself worth something, that you made your, your name ring bells in certain departments, maybe you threatened to walk without giving notice. It's just at will, you know, fuck the professional courtesy. Nowadays, nowadays... Organizations can let you go without a warning. Without a way to reform or rehabilitate or re-educate an individual. Without a way to, um, to mitigate the loss of an individual. I don't know, maybe they think individuals are disposable like that. Some people... Some people like to be abused. <laughs> I don't know why my mind went that way. But it's true. You'll come across them every now and then. Those folks who just enjoy having the nine to five, literally working minimum wage, family living t- check to check, maybe putting something away. They got a wife, they got some kids. And they think that's the life. And as righteous as it might be, I don't think that's enough. They're not necessarily in the way, but they're satisfied. They've settled. So long as they aren't bottlenecking the organization, I've got no problem with them. They're what some people call sheep. And for them, there's sheep dogs. It's the sheep that call the sheep dogs. If they ever run into an issue, they'll likely never handle it themselves. People who would call the cops instead of taking care of it themselves. There's nothing wrong with calling the cops, it's not snitching. If you're not already committing a crime, calling the cops to civic duty, and they have to provide the police, that is, has to provide civic service. They are servants, after all. Public servants, civic servants. But that shit's all semantics. I'm getting off track. When you're entry level in a fire at will state, you have to move slightly more aggressively. This one could be applied to my younger audience. Maybe they're still living at home. Maybe they're living with friends. Maybe they have a small support network that they can rely on. 
Maybe they got a group of friends sharing rent. And if you're willing to share the plan with them, if you're willing to orchestrate and share the plan with them on how to remain entry level forever and move up, uh, you might have your own um, you might have your own group of mini consultants there if you trust them to be business people, people of business as well. Finding the best solution to advance, especially when you're already in, you're already off the bench. You already know who works with the team. You know who the coach is. You know who the manager is. You know who the assistant coaches are. Fuck the sport analogy. You're already in the organization. You know who the players are. You know what the roster looks like. You know who the manager is, who the assistant manager is, who the who the vice president is, who the president is. The CFO, the CEO. All that pertinent information might be get might have been given it to you. Might have been given to you. Might. Am I saying that right? May have been given to you. Yeah. May have been given to you. In an employee handbook. Some sort of manual, employee manual that you must get acquainted with, or they'll tell you that you must get acquainted with. And here's where the majority of people fuck up. Is that they don't read it. (laughs) If you're a corporate cowboy, you'll read that shit. Why? Because it tells you all the rules, all the ins and outs to the corporation, how it works, what the chain of command looks like. It'll, it won't highlight for you, but you'll be able to see where the gray areas exist where you as a corporate cowboy can operate. That is, when you're entry level forever and you have that ambition to work in the gray area, that's where you want to be operating. Yeah, some places will give you more work than you can handle. But what you can do effectively, what you can do efficiently, Is what the company is look for. Is what the companies look for. You can definitely make a case for doing less than what you're expected, but doing it in a manner that excels, in a manner that preserves the organization's integrity, that aligns with its mission statement that aligns with its core objectives. Well, shit, Alex, how how will I know? You'll find it in the employee's manual in the handbook. (laughs) It ain't that hard. It ain't that hard. But I get it. I get it. You walk in Maybe you might be there a week, a month, six months, a year. And just little by little, without having read the manual, you start getting a feeling for the business, for the industry even, depending on how deep into the network you've ventured, whether or not you are an explorer, whether or not you enjoy pushing the envelope, or, I mean, unless you're a settler, You'll find how the industry works on your own and you'll create ideas, ideas that rival even that of the, of the current hierarchy. Again, keep in mind what I said, you'll, you'll arrive at ideas that go against the current hierarchy that might go against the status quo. My opinion is so long as it aligns with the organizational objective and the mission statement you're solid you're a corporate cowboy because you're not working for your fucking manager your manager just supervises you but you're not working for them you're working for the organization so you want to be sure that you're working for a righteous organization one that extols the virtues of integrity honesty respect 
Otherwise, you're fucked. <laughs> like a certain organization that dropped Do No Evil from their own mission statement. Fucking wild times, baby. Wild times. doesn't mean that you've got to all of a sudden be cool with with um what is it crimes against humanity i suppose you don't have to be cool with evil but um if that's the environment you're working in be sure that you're operating in a righteous manner again i don't judge Bad people do good things all the time, and there are some good people who must do bad things from time to time. When you're entry level forever, you catch on to this quick. Notice how I'm saying entry level forever. When I could be saying when you've when you've been in the business, when you've been in the industry for 10 years, when you have experience, you catch on to this. But when you're entry level forever, when you have that mindset going in, you catch on to it quick. You see it. You see it in other people. You can tell the ones who have settled. You can tell them apart. From those who are still moving up. And again... You, you want to be discriminatory. You can also isolate those who are moving up in a, in a manner that's suitable, in a, in a righteous manner, and one that you might want to associate with, thereby incorporating them into your, um, into your own association. There might be some that are doing it through favoritism and sucking dick and maybe you don't want to associate with them <laughs> all right i don't i don't just mean favoritism and sucking dick maybe they're fudging the numbers they just go against the virtues of honesty integrity respect And so you don't want them in your fucking group. So they get in your way. They get in your way. They are bottlenecks to innovation. To a certain extent. Because if what they're doing is only for their personal gain. And not that of the organization. The organization being non-living. Just the infrastructure of honesty, integrity, and respect. And they're in the way. They're in the fucking way. You have to find a way around them. It's not hard to do. I'll probably go into it. I mean, I will go into it in a later episode. How to get around bottlenecks. Or, I don't know, I'll, I'll title it something. Something better. This one, I'm going to name Entry Level Forever or some shit. I'm sure. If you haven't noticed, I'm trying to mess with the analytics, trying to, uh, which, I mean, any smart person should, right? But I'm not just throwing out buzzwords, trying to catch clout on just random, random searches, random hashtags kind of thing. They'll still be relevant. I want, I need folks who are voluntarily searching for this, who are looking for this with intent in their heart who are looking for this with the intent of finding what it means to be a corporate cowboy and realizing that they've been one all along that's what I'm looking for that's what I'm looking for again I'm not bringing people to God God exists God is real God is everywhere Literally, I think that's what the Bible says. God is good. God is bad. Fuck. 
And I don't mean God is bad in the sense that like he's evil. Nah, he's just, if he's the vehicle and the message, come on, fucking you do the math. If he's the vehicle, he, if they are the vehicle and the message, fucking come on. You, you, you decide for yourself. If they are the vehicle and the message. And yeah, I'm just choosing not to assign a gender to be professional. Since I started in, in this shit, I've always been gender neutral. Always been gender neutral. Why? Because I've had good and bad bosses. Male and female. I've always spoken in the in the third person. I've always spoken about them in the third person. They. Is that they? I've always spoken about them in the second person. Sorry. But gender neutral. I've always used they. Always, always. Anybody. Not even not, not even my managers. Even if they're my associates, I always say they. Why? Because it implies there's more of them. <laughs> because I, if I'm fucking with them. It's not just them as individuals. It's their circle. It's their network. It's their it's their social group. Their interests. Their livelihood. So I use them, they, their. Always. And yeah, it, it, it might cause some question. It's becoming normalized now, but I've been doing this shit for over 10 years. I've been doing this shit for over, over 15 years, I think. <clears throat> Hold on now. Nah, let, let's say closer to 10 years because it makes me sound younger. <laughs> I know I'm, I know I'm compromising a little bit. I'm sacrificing a little bit of experience, a little bit of time and experience. But when the message is truth. That shit doesn't age. When the message is truth, and that's what you're slanging, it's better than dope, and it never expires. This one's been a little slow, fam. So, if y'all want, go ahead and, um, no, I'll probably leave this in the description. For those who need to uh, speed it up, maybe get it up to 125, 1.5 times to one and a quarter, one and a half times the speed. Maybe even two times the speed might go for this one. If y'all could keep up, because I know I'm not speaking slow. Well, maybe I'm speaking slow. I'm just taking time to speak. <laughs> So if I could leave you with any words of advice, it's to think about remaining entry level forever. Maybe you want to use that. Maybe you don't in your um, in how you speak and your everyday modes of speaking, because I mean, good luck trying to sell it to a CEO if you don't have a fucking gun to their head. Telling them that they're entry level and you can just fire them at will. <laughs> Good luck. But again, if you could, uh, if you can sell it in a sensible manner, just the concept of being entry level forever, that in itself is a seed and uh, can serve as a form of inspiration to selling a project to a manager and to selling a project to an executive, selling a CEO on a on an initiative just being entry level forever why i mean that way an organization never ages there are some organizations out there that do not appear to age even though they're well respected have prestige behind them have the reputation of being on the edge of innovation not aging you know what that is that shit's being entry level forever. And yeah, it'd be nice to work for them, but it's better to work with them. 
Because every organization, every institution has a hierarchy. Every company, every corporation, they're all opportunities for corporate cowboys. It's up to you if you want to become an employee or if you want to become an associate. But you can always be a corporate cowboy inside or outside. It's been relaxing. Have a great week.